Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Women rights are human rights. Women rights are human rights. Women rights are We have on the program investigative reporter from Raw Story who wrote this amazing piece, great investigative work about how neo Nazi groups are training children for race war, basically, in the United States of America. Uh, Mr. Jordan Green, we appreciate you being on the show. Um, it was a very tough read for me, um, but I know it's necessary yeah. for us to know. Uh, how are you, sir? Doing good. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Richie. It's really good to be with you. It's good to have you, man. Um, let's first start with uh, What's happening inside of these neo-Nazi groups, and how did you gain such significant access to be able to document all of this? Well, what's happening is a lot of um, online radicalization. Um, adolescents, teenagers, white boys who are uh, feeling alienated from society and getting radicalized by others who are older, and then in turn radicalizing younger uh, people and um, they are are steeped in this toxic uh, internet culture of um, gore and uh, uh, racism and violence, and then they are encouraging each other to um, commit crimes and propaganda vandalism to prove their commitments and escalating to more more violent activity. Um, um, again. You're asking how I gained access. So yes. Um, so uh, they they organized on uh, Telegram, a uh, encrypted social media app, um, and uh, I um, gained access to basically lurking on their channels uh, under a sock account and just uh, watching and making screenshots and taking note of who was most active and um, and watching for biographical details that they dropped about themselves. What kind of activity or activities are they being encouraged to do? Um, so it starts with like putting putting up a flyer or just doing some graffiti, but um, you know, obviously, uh, spraying a swastika on an underpass is a lot different than throwing a brick through a synagogue window. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that it would escalate it to in Pensacola, Florida in July of last year. Um, then similarly, um, spray painting anti-Semitic vile uh, graffiti that targets uh, specific community members in, in another incident in New Hampshire. Uh, and once again, this is an article exclusive in Raw Story uh, inside the neo Nazi hate network, grooming children for a race war is the title. Uh, some of the actions obviously are uh, directed, very specific, very targeted. Uh, we have rules or laws now in certain states that enhances the penalty of an adult enticing a minor to do a particular criminal act. Uh, can you talk about the connection or perhaps the disconnect between the adult faction of these neo-Nazi groups and them telling minors to commit criminal activity? Yes, um, I mean, there is like uh, quite a bit of uh, communication between the teenagers and older racist skinheads. Um, so they're getting quite a bit of encouragement from the older skinheads, um, and sometimes the older skinheads will say, don't do something stupid like write the name of your group on the brick you use to smash the, the synagogue window. Um, and I have talked to one, uh, you know, most of the members of 2119 are under 18, but I did talk to one member who's 34 and actually has children the same, a same age as these kids. And um, it was interesting. He told me that he's like very uh, kind of careful not to cross that line um, of uh, spray painting graffiti on a specific prop, uh, private property or directed at a particular person because uh, it's basically a finable offense if you just do it on a highway underpass. Um, but these kids are promoting this activity and using it in propaganda videos and encouraging other um, 
teenagers to commit crimes. Um, you know, this is the same blueprint and methodology that terrorist organizations utilize. It's a propaganda dynamic. Uh, and in the process of the propaganda, they have to dehumanize the other group or groups they are Absolutely. encouraged to go after. So talk to us about that dehumanization process uh, that you have uh, witnessed inside of these encrypted rooms. I mean, that's where the gore video go, uh, gore images go. I mean, pictures of um, uh, black men being killed by the police, um, pictures of um, people who are victims of mass shootings. And it is really uh, designed to, uh, just as you say, desensitize the kids and allow them to dehumanize their opponents and, and condition them towards towards violence. And repetitive uh, use of the N word, um, they use it in directing towards each other as young white men um, and, and other racial slurs as well. How long did you stay uh, in your investigative mode for this story? Um, well, um, I started kind of keeping tabs on it last uh, or December of 2022 and kind of off and on just logging um, all these incidents where the group's name was used and then kind of putting them together. But really kind of intensely working on it from early November on onwards. How extreme on a scale of one to 10, and, and I'm asking you this because you have a perspective that 99.9% of the American population will not have. Scale of one to 10, how dangerous is it? They are, are a seven, I would say. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, the types of activity that they're engaged in, I do define it as violence um, and it is an attack. When you, when you throw us a, a brick through a window where, um, of a house of worship where people are sitting and eating dinner. That's an attack on on people and it's a hate crime. Mm -hmm. um, but they are kind of geared up to becoming much more violent because they express admiration for uh, mass shooters and they talk about their admiration for attacks on uh, the ele electrical power grid and they uh, promote like a paramilitary aesthetic and they talk about themselves as being in a war. So um, the, uh, you know, I say there's a seven because they're not engaged in extreme violence, but they um, are, are seeming to have ambitions towards that kind of extreme violence. In the commentary and the indoctrination, what are they saying about black people? Uh, what are they saying about uh, brown folk or, or members mm -hmm. of the LGBTQ community? Because naturally, uh, there has to be uh, this rhetoric uh, to keep the dehumanization part uh, present. And then secondly, there's a lot of hypocrisy in neo-Nazism. Uh, one of the primary ones is that many of them subscribe to Christian ideology. Did any of that come up in these rooms? Mm, two very good questions. Um, so, you know, they they hate all of the groups, and um, their ideolo ideology is organized around the idea of hating Jews the most, and uh, conspiracy theory that uh, Jews control the world and are currently controlling the United States government. Therefore, they have to overthrow the government. They um, they you know despise. African Americans and see them in the same way that they see immigrants and Muslims as they see them as pawns of a Jewish conspiracy. You know, I would mention that they also defaced the Martin Luther King monument in Concord, North Carolina, and um, they espouse a lot of uh, a false uh, claims about black crime and um, and. And, and to kind of reinforce their idea or their drive towards racial separatism. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry, your, your second question? Um, so oh, Christianity. Yes, the hypocrisy of their movement, it, it, it is always laced with some level of, mm -hmm. of Christian evangelical um, doctrine, while at the same time, racism and violence. 
Yeah, right, right, exactly. Um, the leader of 2119 actually, uh, just until about a month ago, went by a nickname of Constantine. And so a lot of them embrace um, or kind of cloak themselves in the guise of Orthodox Christianity. Um, but they, the white supremacist movement as a whole, they're split between, uh, you know, a fake religion of Christian identity, and then others are kind of into like a Nordic heathen heathenry, um, and others are into Satanism. And uh, being, you know, teenagers, they are like all teenagers. They're kind of casting about for an identity, and they try on all these different kind of religious identities. Um, and they're, you know, they're very inconsistent about it. But the main thing is the white race before all else. You know, I got to ask you about law enforcement and potential involvement uh, because mm -hmm. I, I, I got to say it, dear brother. If, if these were black children engaged in this kind of activity, the conversation would be about gangs, how we got to make an example out of them, how we have to break this up, how we got to stop this from happening, etc. cetera. Uh, DAs would hold press conferences, sheriffs would say not in my town, governors would talk about how they're tough on crime, but none of that has been the reaction yet. So have you seen or has anyone from law enforcement contacted you to say, we want this information? You're absolutely right. They are a gang. I mean, they operate as a gang um, and they're a national security threat uh, to, I mean, if, if you look at their larger aims. Um, I, from, I, I don't have the inside view of law enforcement, but from what it looks like, they are uh, investigating it as a local uh, vandalism, albeit with hate crime enhancements. But to date, I haven't seen seen any indication that they're investigating investigating them as an organization operating across state lines. Um, so that is a concern and I guess to be to be de determined. Um, even though these are a lot of them are children, right? A lot of them are teenagers. Uh, did you hear rhetoric about uh, them supporting Donald Trump or being Trump supporters in general? Um, Yes, they tend to support Trump, um, although they are from the accelerationist uh, tendency of white supremacy. So one of their tenets is no political solution. So they, um, which inherently is violent, uh, means they want to overthrow the United States and they don't see really a purpose in elections. Um, I do think that as with other right wing extremist groups, they're going to try to exploit uh, polarization and division over the presidential election. And um, so, uh, you, you know, they're kind of all over the place. And as with other white supremacist groups, sometimes they kind of tongue in cheek embrace the Democrat thinking that that will uh, radicalize and mo motivate uh, people who are kind of attuned or receptive to, to their message. I have to point out the irony that their ideology is affixed to a non-political solution to basically overthrowing the government as we know it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then a few years ago on January 6th, a group of individuals attempted to do that very same thing, subscribing in action to the ideology that they are talking about in writing. What's the correlation with those two groups? Um, the correlation is that um, you know these group twenty one nineteen the teenagers they really see MAGA as the baseline, um, mm -hmm. and they want to see it move to move beyond it to something more violent. Um, I mean, I, I really think of January sixth as not a um, kind of peak experience for them, but as as the baseline, as I said. Okay. I concur with you. I said something very similar. Uh, this is a great, great piece of investigative work. Uh, Inside the Neo-Nazi Hate Network, Grooming Children for a Race War by Jordan Green, investigative reporter. <clears throat> Raw Story, uh, we got great friends at Raw Story, love Raw Story. Uh, I read Raw Story damn every day. So thank you for this. <laughs> yeah. uh, is, is there is there some, what, what's part two, man? I mean, you you documented so much here. 
what, what, do you do you try to get some more insight, maybe connect the dots even even deeper? What do you want to do next? Well, I mean, there white supremacy, white supremacist, white supremacist movements are shape shifting, um, yeah. so they will change their name and just look for. Uh, places where people are networking to deprive others of their their civil rights and and, and watch how they kind of glom on to more mainstream movements and manipulate the dialogue, I, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, great report, Jordan. We appreciate you, dear brother. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Dr. Ritchie. Take care. You too.